The idea is, is definitely to create this sense of connection to technology that, that, that feels magical. And I, I think the reason people feel magic from this, even if it's just moving blocks around, is, is that the potential um, that comes from that sense of connectivity to computers is, is very, it's, it's massive. And uh, uh, you, you can think, for example, about things that you can only do with fingers, like trans transforming learning by making it so the same way that we as children for the rest of our lives understand all the permutations of what will happen if we throw a basketball through the air. Um, we can't hold hands. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. would be the really sweet thing, is we could hold hands. Uh -huh. Yeah. We, we can't shake hands or hold hands yet, but it feels like we're pretty close to being able to tickle each other. <laughs> um, so being able to play basketball in this space and actually throw a free throw would be pretty amazing. Oh, sorry, Jackie. I keep hitting Jackie with the microphone. I'm sorry, yeah. Jackie. Uh, but, Emmy Award winning producer yeah. Jackie is going to get a black eye. Uh, uh, sorry, but, Jackie. But, but if you also, I think if you imagine uh, you know, how every single person in the world knows exactly the physics of throwing a basketball because they did it once or twice as a child. Um, so we have this ability to learn that comes from our hands that is different than how we learn things abstractly. Um, and, you know, Tony Hawk is an amazing skateboarder, not because he knows the equations best, because he has this also, this intuitive understanding. Um, but we can only learn that in re real life about things we can grab like balls, but not like the sun or quantum particles. Um, but in VR, you, you can do that. Um, you know what's super fascinating about this is it feels to me like my mind is completely tricked. So I have an itch on my nose here. My mind feels so tricked right now that I feel like this is the real world. Because when your hands are this, when the fidelity on your hands is this good, like I'm touching my fingers, each one, when the fidelity is this good, I mean, I'm moving very fastly, touching my pinky and my thumb together, and then doing each finger, um, it's triggering the, the menu. But when I'm doing it, it feels so real that my brain is being tricked into thinking that I'm really in uh, the real world, when in fact I'm in obviously in virtual reality. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, they ask if you need sort of haptics, like if you, if you need to feel that you're touching something, but um, you know, we find that, that most people actually, um, that the brain is tricked into providing almost a little bit of insensation um, of touch. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So when I hit it, and I throw it, or I knock it away, um, it actually knows. Yeah, this is truly amazing. I have to say, this is just the fidelity is incredible. So this is the literally the first demo that you guys have done? Th this is that is, right? This is, this is one of the first demos, although... Uh, you know, now that now we've t basically taken that same uh, little device you referenced at the beginning of the show, uh, yeah. the, the 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 peripheral, and we've made it so as you can see because you're wearing it now, so yeah. that people can mount it on a headset, oh. and um, with this is just basically software upgrades, so anyone can for free download this software, which is you know, four generations later than the the one that came out several years ago, um, and of course we're. We're also working with OEMs that are making VR and AR devices to embed this as the as a control mechanism as well. So then different people will be incorporating your software into their system. Yep, yeah, absolutely. The, the goal you know, the goal is to be so ubiquitous that there's no need to have a peripheral. Um, and so when will this uh, actually have the um, ability to have an application that I might use at work or like something that's more than just a really slick demo, like a, a killer app. Do you have a killer game for this? Yeah, th there will be, the killer apps will be things like games, but also well, one of the reasons we chose VR and error is, is we think that the hands are also just the primary input. So you know, users will use this to load things on the operating system. They'll use it uh, especially if you if you think about something like augmented reality, where you know the 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 sort of holy grail are something that's like a tiny pair of glasses that can project physically indistinguishable things around you on top of anything that you could look just like a TV or an object, and, and obviously 
because the whole point of air is that you can see through it and look at your hands. You'll, you can't really imagine anything being in the primary input for air except hands. So there are, there are a lot of um, demos and developers who are already using this to build things like gamifying stroke rehabilitation or controlling robots on the other side of the world. Um, or, uh, for example, the Australian government is using this for its mandatory training for coal miners. Um, but as a consumer product, we, we really we, we want to make it the primary input. Um, not, not necessarily the only one. There are other things that are valuable as well. Um, like voice might be better for text input than using your hands. But, uh, but I think nothing can replace the sense of connection and presence you get with fingers and hands. Hey everybody, I wanna welcome NetSuite as a new partner here at This Week in Startups. And if you're listening to this, you're probably a business owner and a leader, and you probably have said one of the following to yourself, why is it taking accounting so long to close the books? And we beat our revenue goal, but we lost money. Why? And the dreaded, we're getting audited. Yes, all of these things are a sign that you've outgrown your business management software. Or maybe you're not even using any software. QuickBooks and spreadsheets work fine at the start of a company. Of course, we all do that. But now there's too many mistakes and delays and you can't get answers fast. So you need the number one business management solution for growing companies. That is NetSuite from Oracle. NetSuite from Oracle is gonna solve all these problems. You're gonna know what's going on in your business in real time. Revenue, expenses, customers, orders, even your HR department, everything in a gorgeous dashboard, on your phone even. And their current clients include people you know, like GitHub, Local Analytics, Localytics rather, PlanGrid, and 88% of Bessemer's next cloud unicorns are using NetSuite by Oracle. You're up and running fast, and it's the last business system you're ever going to need. So here's your call to action. Very simple, go to netsuite.com slash twist, and you will get your free guide. That guide is called Overcoming Your Five Obstacles for Growth. Okay and let's get back to this amazing episode.